Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Saints of the Most High God, what a privilege tonight to gather again at His feet. I greet you with joy, saints of the Almighty God. Our God is awesome. He's so big we can't get around Him. He's so high we can't get over Him. And He's so low at the same time. You can't get underneath Him. I pray today for you earnestly that His blessings will not miss you wherever you are in the name of Jesus. I pray that tonight you will have an encounter with Him right now as He's already, as Jehovah King of Glory already is waiting for you right now. What a joy, what a privilege, what a joy to be called His own. What a joy, what a blessing to call unto Him as our Father tonight. I want you to know we serve a faithful Father. We are partakers of His inheritance because our life is hidden in Christ Jesus. We can be proud and privileged to be called His Son. Hallelujah. We are the sons of the Most High God, the children of the um, of Almighty God. I thank God for your lives. Hallelujah. I greet you, those of us on the radio right now. I greet you with joy. This is Bishop Akin Akintola on the Van Encounters tonight. Hallelujah. I pray your life will be tremendously impacted tonight because of his faithfulness. He who is on the line right now, who is in our midst right now, the presiding, hallelujah, the presiding king, the director of this gathering tonight is already on the throne. Hallelujah. I pray, oh God, that joy cannot be improved upon in your life tonight as a result of this encounter with him. Hallelujah. I pray, O oh God, divine supernatural pleasure, victory, provision, a direction tonight will be yours in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's observe this great protocol tonight. Hallelujah. Take the liberty in the realm of the Spirit to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords and to approach His throne tonight. With the songs of praise and thanksgiving of your own in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God. Let's worship this great God. What a mighty God. You are angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God. You are. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. What a mighty God you are. Hallelujah, the there is something that makes me come into your presence, my Papa. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my Papa. My Papa, oh, my Papa. My Papa, oh, Daddy, my Papa, oh. There is something that makes me Come into your presence, my empire. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my empire. There is something that makes me come into your presence, my empire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Rimakia. Yeri mama kori yarama. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of my praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. As I come into your presence, Lord. Past the gates of praise into your sanctuary till we are standing face to face. I looked upon your countenance and see the fullness of your grace. 
I can only bow down and say, You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise, and to you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. But Father, we are so thankful tonight because we know that your presence is already with us. We thank you because your holy angels also have been discharged and given special and specific mandate to do your bidding concerning every one of us, your children tonight, ready to reward us for our obedience to yielding and hackling to this direction tonight to gather at your feet yet again to meet you in this Galilee on this encounter line tonight in the name of Jesus Father God you that is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all we can ask or think Father to you we say thank you to you we surrender to tonight to do absolutely all that you please with us tonight. Speak Lord for your sons, your daughters, hallelujah, heareth and is inclined to what you are about to say and we are ready to receive them and run with them in the name of Jesus. For we know here lies, hallelujah, here lies our blessings in Jesus' mighty name, our reward on this face of the earth in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for destroying every yoke that may be on the shoulder of anyone tonight. Sweet of heaviness, I speak to you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to lose your hold, for you have already been loosed in heaven. Hallelujah. For you to obey, to be scattered, for you to be lifted upon the shoulders of God's elect. For Christ our Lord and Savior already paid the total price, defeated you on the cross, on the cross of Calvary. Sickness, diseases, I adjure you even today in the mighty name of Jesus. Pain, I command you to lose your hold upon the life and the temples of God's elect today in Jesus' mighty name. For I know there is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. And so, in Jesus' mighty name, you there in Australia, I speak to you right now. You needing, hallelujah, the touch of God, the encounter of Almighty God tonight. I speak to you all, you contrary spirit. Every plan and machinations of the enemy against God's elect tonight. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be paralyzed and lose your hold in Jesus' mighty name. Pain. I command you to go right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Unbelief, I close the door against you right now in the life, in the heart of everyone under the sound of my voice right now. Everyone connecting in this service right now in Jesus' mighty name. Provision, I loose you into the life of God's elect. It is written. The wealth of the sinners are laid up to the just. It is written, God will cause men even to give unto our bosoms, pressed down, shaking together, running over. I lose it upon every life right now, connected under this anointing right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Abba Father. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. We praise you, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. I close every door of spiritual leakage. The life of the saints right now in the name of Jesus. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The King of glory has entered right now. In the name of Jesus, God of glory is on the scene right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be thou glorified, be thou exalted. Be thou glorified, be thou exalted in the life of everyone tonight. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. 
In Jesus' precious name we have prayed and all the saints shout amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Saints of the Most High God, what a joy once again tonight to gather at His feet. Hallelujah. This is day number nine in this month of fruitfulness. Praise God. And in this second half of this year, 2014, the month of June, I pray that this month indeed will be fruitful in every area of it, in every aspect of it, in your life, in the name of Jesus. I pray your ministry this month will be so fruitful, tremendous in every area of it. There will be increase, enlargement. There will be increase in provision in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, because you are a minister of the Almighty God. Yes. Not just because you are a prophet of God or you, you hold or sit in an office in the body of Christ. I pray, oh God, you will be fruitful in all levels of your ministry in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, even your prayer life will be fruitful. I pray your faith life, your work of faith will be fruitful. I pray above all that your listening ears will be developed, sharpened. When you hear God loud and clear, from now on, no confusion, no eaves and bots, no wondering whether this is God. You will know without any shadow of doubt. And I pray that fruitfulness also will manifest itself in your life by your heart and spirit of humility to carry on what God says to do and the divine instruction you hear from on high in Jesus' mighty name. That's my prayer for you, saints of the Most High God, tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I began sharing with us the tools of our trade for some time now because not only this year has been tagged and designated, hallelujah, the year of possibilities in your life, hallelujah. And this month in particular has been tagged Prophetically, the month of fruitfulness. I want you to understand God is committed to making sure not only you experience the anointing, the grace of possibility in your life, but also you will be fruitful. Hallelujah. And uh, your fruit will abound. Your fruit, your success, your prosperity perhaps, if you want to call it like that, will be obvious. To this our generation in Jesus mighty name. I want you to know men and women will call you blessed. They know you have met with almighty God. They know truly indeed you are. You are a partaker of his inheritance in Jesus mighty name. They know truly indeed you serve a faithful and a living God in Jesus mighty name. And last week in pursuance of that. I shared a special tool, hallelujah, to succeed and to experience the grace of divine possibilities in our lives and to enhance the fruitfulness of God in our lives. I, began, I share with us what I have titled the essence of thanksgiving. If you like, divine essence of thanksgiving. I made us to understand that thanksgiving is a prophetic directive given to every believer from on high. And when we are obedient in this arena, God promises us that we will eat the good of the land. I want you please to turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm number 67. And uh, the Lord told me to come this way tonight. This is part two of last week's message. Part two of the essence of thanksgiving or the divine essence of thanks this is part two of it but it has a particular focus tonight and this is the focus is how to give thanks unto god how to really divinely respond to this prophetic uh, directive from god thanksgiving connotes something that needs to come from us the giving of thanks, in other words, from you has to come thanks and give it unto God. You give thanks from you, from me, from every saint. Hallelujah. 
must come this time. How to do just that is what I want to focus on tonight. I want us, we are going to look in the scriptures. Please pay attention to what you're about to hear. These will complete the divine directive of thanksgiving given to every believer to profit with. Listen to what Psalm 67 I'm going to read from verse 1, but in particular, uh, I want you to see verses uh, verse 3 and also verse 2 as well in particular. But I'm going to read for sake of clarity so that you get the full picture of what we're talking about. Hallelujah. I'll read from verse 1 of Psalm 67. God be merciful unto us and bless us. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. The psalmist says we are to ponder on that on this statement. Verse number two went on to say that thy way may be known upon earth. Did you, did you see that? That thy way may be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Please hear me good. I will be talking specifically tonight on how to give thanks to God. How to give thanks to God. Last week I spoke expressly on five essences. In other words, the reason why or the divine reason why we should give thanks or the reason why God instructed the believer to give him thanks. The reason why God expects the believer to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Look at what verse 3 says. It says, Let the people praise thee, O God. I mentioned from last week, anywhere you see praise, thanksgiving precedes praise. Thanksgiving, one of the essence of it is that it releases the sound of praise from your lips, the, be- the lips of the believer. If the believer is to praise God as God has commanded us to praise him. In fact, he says, let everything that hath bread praise his holy name. Praise God. I want us to understand that this must always be done. The true praise of God will always be uh, unctioned, will always be triggered, activated, by the heart of thanksgiving in your heart hallelujah you have to be appreciative and uh, recognizing god's faithfulness and goodness in your life i'm talking about personally hallelujah not just saying it when you are told to say it or when you are told to thank god no you have the responsibility the onions of giving thanks and praise is upon you. And this is always triggered by you acknowledging, counting your blessings, reminiscing upon the goodness of God on a daily, regular basis. And then that will release the sound of praise from your lips. So verse number 3 of Psalm 67 says, Let the people praise thee. Let the believer praise God. Oh, praise thee, O God. Let all the people, did you see that? Let all the people praise thee. Well, I will praise him when he manifests what I'm trusting him for. No, you may never experience what you're believing him for, so to say, if you don't thank him and offer him praise. Hallelujah. As I mentioned last week, this is very, very important. Don't put your cart before the horse. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving and praise is the horse. Praise God. The manifestation of what you are looking for is the cart. Don't put your cart before the horse. Hallelujah. You know that will never work. He went on to say in verse number four, Oh, let the nations be glad. Hallelujah. For Thessalonians 5 and verse 16, rejoice forevermore. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy for thou shalt judge the people righteously praise god govern the nation upon the earth 
Look at verse number five, please, with me, saints of the Most High. Let the people praise thee, O God. Hmm. It's like saying, when the people praise you, O God, or when the people praise God, then, O God, let, don't let me go ahead of myself. It went on for emphasis reasons, the B part of verse number five. It says, let all the people praise thee. It's emphasizing on the involvement of every believer in praising God. And of course, thanking him precedes the praising him. If you are not thankful, the sound of praise will not come from your lips. You may be singing, but that singing will be like you're opening your mouth and you're closing it. It's not based on anything. You'll be, in fact, you know, you'll be praising God and you'll be looking so sad. You'll be looking so, you know, your heart will be so heavy. <laughs> that is a song being sung in the flesh. That's to tell you that. Look at, look at verse number 6. This is very important. He says, Then shall the earth yield our increase. Based upon your praises, that is triggered by your thanksgiving. Hallelujah. He says, The earth will yield her increase unto you. Your fruitfulness will emerge. Your success will emerge. Your harvest will manifest. Praise God. Your victory, praise God, will be imminent. Hallelujah. You will be triumphant over all the trials and troubles of life. No weapon formed or fashioned against you will prosper. Your adversary will be disgraced. Hallelujah. Listen to me, child of God, I'm going somewhere today. Verse number 7 went on to say, In fact, the B part of verse 6, And God, even our God, shall bless us. You see that? Based upon thanking God, which releases His praise in your life, not only your fruitfulness will emerge, your breakthroughs and so on and so forth will also surface. God will bless you. His blessings will also emerge. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. So tonight I want to look at how to give God thanks. How to give God thanks. Thanksgiving is not just a spiritual cliche. Thanksgiving. Even in the natural, you know to give thanks. When you receive something. Thanksgiving is an acknowledgement that you have received something. So it always precedes the manifestation of what God has done. Or what you want God to manifest in your life. Because the truth of the matter is as far as God is concerned. He daily loads us with benefit. He has already bestowed upon us with all things that pertain unto life. And godliness as far as is east is from the west. My God, nothing also will separate us from his love before we are ever conceived, let alone being born on the face of the earth. He has prepared a wealthy place unto us. He has prepared the garden of Eden for us so that all of the blessings of life awaits us already waiting for us there so he expects us always to acknowledge the recipient the receipt of these blessings in our lives hallelujah that is the whole point so thanksgiving is something that you and i also like all other instructions we have to be a master in this arena we must understand it. We must know the essence of it. We must know how it is to be done properly. Not the way we want. You know, you know, you can thank God on your own terms. For example, when you wait to thank God for the manifestation, before you thank Him, you are not doing it right. <laughs> I'm not saying it is wrong to thank Him 
when you physically receive something, I'm not saying that, but if you wait until you physically receive it, or you physically see the manifestation of it, then you are not doing it right. Praise God. Thanksgiving must always precede the physical manifestation. In fact, if you don't understand what I'm saying right now, you will find out that uh, you delay the appearance or the manifestation of what you believe in Him for. And you'll be wondering what's going on. This is what is going on. You have put the cart before the horse. Thanksgiving and praise always precedes the manifestation of His promises. Without going back to what I mentioned last week, uh, I want you to know that all of the blessings is released. It starts from these great instruction. Great instruction to give God thanks and praise. You'll be denied access if you don't do that. Hallelujah. And I pray that when you have access unto God, you have everything. You are already prosperous when you have access to God. Hallelujah. I love the way the book of Genesis chapter 39 puts it concerning Joseph. Genesis chapter 39 from verse 2 down to verse 5, I think, and also verse 21. It says concerning Joseph. He reported that God was with Joseph. And because God was with, was with him, he is a pros or well, he was a prosperous man. Listen to this. When you are or you gain access to God, when God is with you, you are already a prosperous man. Hallelujah. That is a prosperous person. A prosperous child of God. Therefore, when you are obedient in this, no wonder he says, wealth and riches is in your house. A man that loves the Lord is a man that obeys his instructions and follow his precepts and decrees. Hallelujah. Psalm 112, verse 1 down to verse 3. The man that loves the Lord, wealth and riches will be in his house. No wonder he says that. So whilst you are looking for it, hallelujah, he says it's there. You have to now acknowledge it. Praise God. Now you acknowledge wealth and riches with your thanksgiving and praise also. I love it. Verse 21 mentioned to say, Joseph was a prosperous man because the Lord is with him. So when you are in his presence, you are prosperous. Hallelujah. I say you are prosperous. You now see the reason why you can praise him, you can worship him, you can thank him. I said thank him and praise him. Now, go with me please to Genesis, the 12th chapter of Genesis. I want us to look at the way our father in the faith, Abraham, from the time God called him out, hallelujah, from his uh, kindred and where he was living at the time with the rest of his family, praise God. Genesis chapter 12. I want us to see how he offered thanks and praise unto God. I mean, thanks given unto God. The Bible calls it, he sacrificed unto God. Thanksgiving, he's done in two ways. With your mouth, by praising him, which is triggered by your heart of thanksgiving, which also connotes that you are you have received what God has done. You have received His promise. Hallelujah. You are acknowledging that God is not a man that will lie. So, begins to thank Him and praise Him. And then He made an altar. For a bit of clarity, I will read the first uh, three verses and I'll jump to some other verses and chapters to see specifically. What I'm about to share, what I'm sharing with us tonight. I'm looking at how to give thanks to God. The first part of thanksgiving is with our heart by reminiscing upon what God has already done, hallelujah, in our lives. And I'll tell you something, he has, He's done awesome things. 
And as far as God is concerned, He's done everything that we need. He has provided everything. He has the solution. He has given unto us victory. Everything He has, He has done it. When He hung on the cross, that was before you and I were ever born. Not alone conceived. Hallelujah. Now watch this now. I read from verse number one. I want to see something here. Now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. Verse number one of chapter 12. And from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. This is the instruction of the Lord unto you. Like unto you, the instruction given unto you, God has bestowed unto you all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He has not will bestowed unto you after you have fasted and prayed. No, he has already done it. That is why he commands thanksgiving and praise from you to acknowledge what he has done. Until you acknowledge what he has done, you are in for an, an unpleasant surprise. You are in for a rude awakening. Because you you probably won't experience what you believe uh, what you what you're expecting because really you are not believing. Believing is attesting to what has already been done. Hallelujah! As opposed to believing for something to be done. Let me say that again: believing or faith is believing for what has already been done. Believe. Or attesting to the fact that something promised by God has already been done. As opposed to believing for something to be done. You don't believe for something to happen. You believe that something has already happened. Did you get that? Or well, let me read on. Look at verse number 2. God is speaking to Abraham here. Verse 2. And I will make thee. A great nation. That's the promise of God unto Abraham. I will bless thee. I will uh, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Four powerful promises right here. I will make thee a great nation. That is from you. I will make you a great nation. Praise God. And I will bless thee. And I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Look at verse 3. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Did you see that? In thee all the families of the earth be blessed. That is why I'm coming this way tonight to look at what Abraham did. Hallelujah. How he did what you and I are looking into tonight. How he showed God his appreciation. How he received the promise of God. Praise God. And how God tremendously honored his word in his life. Now watch this. As a result of his obedience. Hallelujah. In giving God thanks. In acknowledgement of his promises in his life. You and I must learn to acknowledge God's promises in our lives. Hallelujah. We are not on the quest of convincing God to bless us. He has already blessed us. He gave us his promise. He gave us his word. Jesus already or completed the work by atoning for all of it and paying the price for us all on the cross of Calvary. Verse number 4 went on to say, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old, when he departed out of Haran, in obedience to God, of course. I know God never told him specifically to go with uh, his, 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 uh, his niece, uh, sorry, his nephew rather, you know, uh, but he went with him. Anyway, let's leave that aside. You don't have to be perfect to be, to, to, for God to bless you, but you just have to do what is right. You have to do what is right. Praise God. Now, that is, that is the key I, wanna, I want to bring out here tonight. And Abraham took Sarah his wife, Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered. 
and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan, they arrive in Canaan. Look at verse 6. And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham. Verse number 7. It gets really, really exciting from here. Listen to this shout of God. And said un, unto thy seed will I give this land. He heard the voice of God again when he got to Canaan. And God spoke to him unto thy seed. Unto Abraham and unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord. He appeared unto him. Listen to me. Listen. Look, look at that, that, that verse. When, when, he, when God spoke to me again, he confirmed the promise he has made unto him in the earlier verses. Verses 1, verses 2 and all the rest of it. Praise God. He says, I will make a great nation of thee. Praise God. Now he went. He says, he built an altar right there. What does that signify? An altar signify, number one, heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Signifies he has received the promise of God. Signifies he believed God at his promises unto him. Hallelujah. Signifies. That he's, he's thankful to God for his promises. So he built an altar there. And he thanked God there. And he didn't just do it. Just with, uh, with, an, em with, 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 with an empty em with words only. This time they will always bring something precious to God. Hallelujah. That's the part two of giving thanks unto God. Not with just your lips. You bring a, a precious gift unto God also. A tangible gift. Uh, uh, look at what verse number eight also went on to say. And he removed from thence unto a mountain in the east of Bethel and pitched his tent. Having Bethel on the west and he on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord. That's the second time now. When he heard God in verse number 7, confirming that this land of Canaan, I have given it to you and your seed. He thanked God for that encounter. Hallelujah. And he said, Lord, I received that. I acknowledge that. Hallelujah. And he blessed God, set up an altar. Again, the next verse, verse 8, he moved unto a mountain. In Bethel, hallelujah, east of Bethel. And he also, there, he built another altar and called upon the name of the Lord. What does that mean? He called upon the name of the Lord. He blessed the name of the Lord, hallelujah. He was thankful unto God, praise God, for his goodness, for his promises, hallelujah. Mind you, <laughs> These things, you know, he's doing them as he's going along. Praise God. Some of the blessings he has already he's seen them, some is yet to see them. Remember, one of the promises that God gave him is that his seed will be great on the face of the planet. He will make a great nation of him. This time he was barren. And he was thanking God, making an altar before the manifestation shows up. Hmm. Verse number 9, And Abraham journeyed, going on still toward the south. Hallelujah. Verse 10, And there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Praise God. I'm going to jump to chapter 13 because of time. Hallelujah. Now you can read the rest of it. It's very, very interesting. This is where Pharaoh, the sons of Pharaoh, you know, were interested in uh, Sarah, his wife, and he told them, well, it's not my wife, it's my sister, really, and so on and so forth. You know, please finish that chapter number 12. Let me jump to uh, chapter 13. Hallelujah. Now, I read from verse, uh, um, verse, verse 14. Hallelujah. It says, um, 
And the Lord said unto Abraham, After that Lord has separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to the seed forevermore I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Verse number 18 of chapter 13 of Genesis, Then Abraham removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Did you see that again? He built there an altar again, because he heard of the Lord. Hallelujah. And God also reinforced the promise unto him. He's yet to experience these promises in, time, in the physical. In other words, the manifestation of these promises is yet to come. He's still barren, even at this time. As God has previously promised him, hallelujah, every time you encounter God, every time he encounters God, he will make an altar. Praise God. He don't just make an altar, you know, just with words only. They will always put something or add something precious to it. Hallelujah. Now, go to chapter 15, please. Chapter 14 is the place where he went into a battle and uh, he gave tithe to Melchizedek. I'm going to jump chapter 14. Go to 15, please. Hallelujah. Verse number 1. And after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Sin I go, Charles, that, uh, that the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my here. Hallelujah. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, verse 4, This shall not be thine hair, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine hair. Hallelujah. And he brought to him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be again. He's reinforcing the promise he has already given unto him. Look at verse number 6. And he, Abraham, believed in the Lord. And he counted it. God counted this belief. Hallelujah. Unto him for righteousness. Praise God. Look at verse 7. And he said unto him, I am, I am the Lord thy God. That brought thee out of all to the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me and Haifa. Take me and Haifa. He asked God, I want you to give me a, show me a sign. Hallelujah. How do I make sure that all these promises will come to pass in my life? Look at what God says. God says, bring me an heifer, three years old, she, a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another. But the birds divided he not. And when he first, oh God... Look at let, let me jump, let me jump, let me jump, let me jump to verse number 12. Now watch this now. He didn't only just thank God with mouth, he believed him all right. But all God says, he asked God, how do you, ah, am I sure? How is this thing going to really come to fruition in my life? God says, bring me a sacrifice. Give, give me, bring me a tangible offering. Hallelujah. Saints of God. I want you, this month of fruitfulness, prepare God a tangible sacrificial offering. Prepare it. In addition to your voice of praise 
and your heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Prepare God a sacrificial offering of thanks. The be part of your thanksgiving with your lips and your heart. Hallelujah. Prepare it for God and you shall see the goodness of God. God says, upon the question that Abraham asked God, God says, bring me a sacrificial offering. Remember, he's been building altar, he's been building altar, he's been building altar. Bring me a sacrificial offering. Hallelujah. Give, give me something that is precious. Hallelujah. I don't have time to get into the significance of these Apha, he goat, she goat, and all the rest of it. Hallelujah. The rams, the significance of all these, the turtle dove, the young pigeon, and all the rest of it. They have their significance. But these are precious substances or tangible things in sacrifice that God asks from Abraham to make sure that all of these promises manifest in his life. Now, look at what Abraham did. And when the sun was going down, it deeply fell upon Abraham, and lo, a horror and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, No, of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that... Hallelujah. Based upon this sacrifice, God also spoke to him through a vision, confirming. He saw a vision of it. He saw the reality. He saw this thing come to pass, the promises in the vision. Oh, let me read that. Let, let me continue verse number 13. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them. In fact, he's giving him prophecy, showing him what is what was going to happen to his descendants. Mind you, in the natural, he's still barren. God begin to show him what is to come. Hallelujah. How the, the, the promise will unfold in his life. And also that nation whom they shall serve will, will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. You see that? But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of Amorites is not yet full. Mm. Let me jump to verse 18. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying unto thy seed, Have I given this land from the river, oh God, from the river Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and the Canaanites, the Kenizzites, and the Cadmonites. And on and on and on, all to verse 21. Began reading my time. Time is, uh, will not permit me tonight to go as far as what I really wanted uh where i really wanted i uh, want to get to but i want to understand something is um what i want you to understand is in addition to your praises triggered by the heart of thanksgiving also is in order for you to thank god with your substance tangible substance sacrificial substance hallelujah what means a lot to you? Praise God. If you go to chapter 22, you see where he sacrificed Abraham, uh, Isaac rather, unto the Lord of Mount Moriah. That is a great sacrifice unto him. Remember that. And God says, now I know that you trust me, you fear me, you obey me. You truly obey me, you walk in obedience to me. Hallelujah. And he gave him a substitute. Praise God. He believed anyway that God will, will surely provide a sacrificial lamb. But he obeyed God by laying his own son on the altar of sacrifice. The altar is never empty. There must be a tangible substance on it. Sense of God, prepare God. A sacrificial, tangible substance this month prepare it and i assure you i assure you indeed wealth and riches will be in your house i assure you tangible manifestation of god will be yours hallelujah as god has promised the month of fruitfulness hallelujah prepare this unto the lord prepare this unto the lord don't just pay a lip service prepare with your substance 
Let it be something that means a lot to you. Something that means something to you. It has to be sacrificial. Not just something that doesn't mean anything to you. Something that you can, you, you can afford to even lose or just throw away like that. No. Something that means something to you. Even God our Father, when He desires many sons, when He desires many sons, He gave His only Son. He gave His only Son. He gave His only Son. That is God our Maker Himself. And you know, He created us to function the way He functions. In His image and in His likeness. So, what you're hearing is not unusual. It's just that probably we don't, we don't, we don't minister to people this way often. So people take it for granted. We think we all we need to do is to bombard God with our prayers and our petitions and, and just, you know, cry and weep and bellyache. If you can shed a lot of tears, then God probably might be convinced. No, you just, God is not, it's not, it's not a wicked God. But he demands obedience. You know, and I'm saying one of the major powerful tools to succeeding in life and to be fruitful on the face of the planet is to learn how to give thanks unto God. And thanksgiving is in two parts. The one that comes from your heart and releases the sound of praise from your mouth and your tangible sacrificial giving, offering, hallelujah. We often call it thanksgiving offering. That is what it means. Praise God. So prepare a tangible offering unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Give it unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Praise God. Give it. Go to the house of God and give it. Hallelujah. Some of you will be led to give to this ministry. You've never... Thank God for what God has done in your life through this ministry before. Because no one has ever asked you to do that. Hallelujah. Just to let you know, it's not about money anyway. It's not about this and that. But something is needful. Oftentimes we need to say thank you to God. With our giving, not just with lip service. With our giving, God is leading you to put that thanksgiving offering into this ministry. Obey the Lord and do it. Hallelujah. But what is important is for you to prepare yourself a tangible offering. You don't need to tip God. If all what is tangible in your life is five pounds or ten pounds, <laughs> well, it's up to you. But I want you to know that God is much bigger than that. Praise God. Let it be tangible. Let it be sacrificial on your part. Praise God. Challenge yourself. Let it require faith on your side to do. You're thanking God for awesome things He has done. He has made available unto you through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Prepare that. Hallelujah. If He asks you to sow into this ministry, please do so. Request, give us a text. Hallelujah. And request our bank details so you can put your offering into the account details. If you want, uh, if you want to mail a check or something like that, also request for the mailing address in the name of Jesus. If you are listening on the radio right now, hallelujah, you can text or you can email Bishop Akintola at hotmail.com and request for the bank details, hallelujah. Or you can go to our website, hallelujah, www.gfmi.org.uk GFMI that stands for Gospel Faith Ministries International, and you find our account details on that on the web on the home page of that of this website, www.gfmi.org.uk. You find that there, and you just go ahead and obey the Lord. Praise God! All the information you need is right there on the website. And I promise you, God is not a man that will lie. He will not shortchange you. Praise God. Already people are already testifying to the goodness of God already. Hallelujah. 
I, I don't want these moments, these blessings also to pass you by. That is why, hallelujah, do what God has asked you to do, and it shall be well with you in Jesus' mighty name. Saints of the Most High, what are you proposing to bless the Lord with tonight? Make up in your mind to propose something that will show your appreciation to God. Praise God. Something that is tangible. God gave his best in order to win many, many sons. He has billions of sons right now. Hallelujah. Billions of sons. Billions of children. Amen. He gave his best. Propose to give your best to God. To say thank you to God. Show your appreciation to him. This month. Don't delay. Hallelujah. This may be what has been holding back the manifestation of your blessings anyway. It could be. I'm telling you right now. I don't have time to share testimonies on to, uh, with you. Hallelujah. There are people who have obeyed God in this arena. Instant manifestation of God's goodness. And I believe that is your portion also in Jesus' mind as you obey God. You saw the life of Abraham. Instant manifestation. Hallelujah. When he sacrificed Isaac. Instant manifestation of the sacrificial lamb showed up. Praise God forevermore. And that also establishes all the other promises that God gave him. Hallelujah. You know Isaac. In, it, in itself is a manifestation of God's promise in his life. Praise God. That also came as a result of sacrifice unto God. Not only just believing him with the lips, he made an altar and sacrificed a tangible, hallelujah, substance on that altar. That is your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Saints of the Most High God, wherever you are right now, I want you to take a moment to ponder on God's goodness. I know God has been so good to you. I know. I don't have to know you personally. To know that God has been good. I know this. There are many people. That you know. There are some people. That are even perhaps very very close to you. That started this year. But right now they are not alive today. You must know that God has been good. For keeping you alive. At least you have clothes on your back. You are not walking naked everywhere. You have clothes on your back. You may not have the kind of colors you, you want, but you have clothes. Isn't God, isn't God good? There are, there are people who don't have any. So many things. You are not starving to death. There are people who are starving, going hungry every night. Tonight there are people who are going hungry tonight, but you are not one of them. Isn't it good? Isn't it worthy? To receive your thanks. Isn't it in order or appropriate for you to give him thanks? Even with your praise and your sacrificial giving. Hallelujah. Isn't it worthy to receive a vow, a tangible vow from you? Psalm 65 verse 1 says, Praise with it for thee, O God, in Zion. And unto thee shall the vow be performed. Unto thee shall the vow be performed. Did you see that? Praise waited for thee, O God. So not just praise, not just lip service. A tangible sacrificial giving also should be added with your praise. Make a promise unto God. Make a vow right now. Can I challenge you? Hallelujah. 50 pounds signifies jubilee. Hallelujah. It's a good figure to start with. If that does not require faith on your part, if that is extremely convenient for you, then maybe you want to look into maybe 500. Hallelujah. Or 300. Hallelujah. Or 1,000. To say thank you to God. You don't have to give it to this ministry. If you're not led that way. Find a godly place. But I want you to know. 
Hallelujah. Show your heart of thanksgiving to God and you would experience his promise in your life. But I want you to know God is in this place. If God has been blessing you over the years and months and weeks through this ministry, isn't it worthy? Hallelujah. To say thank you, to appreciate this ministry and what God is doing through this ministry in your life perhaps and in, your, and in the life of your loved ones and even what this ministry is doing in the life of many, many that are being blessed, connected with this ministry around the world to appreciate God. Sense of the Most High God, if you will believe God and if you will be obedient, I promise you testimony will not cease in your life. Testimony will not cease in your life. I'll read this in closing Psalm 100 and from Psalm 112. Closing, I mentioned it when I was ministering. Hallelujah. Psalm 112. I read from verse 1 down to verse 3. Praise God. Note this down. Praise ye the Lord. Bless is the man that feareth the Lord. In other words, the man who obeys God, the man who is obedient to God, thanking him, not just with your lips, but also with your vows, with a substance, tangible offering unto God. Hallelujah. Listen to the promise of God. It says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Is that not similar to the promise he gave to Abraham? The generation of the upright shall be blessed. It's talking about your generation. So these obedience that you're about to uh, fulfill unto God is going to yield dividend. Look at verse number 3. Apart from your, your seed being mighty upon the earth, your generations also, uh, your generation shall be blessed. So your seed shall be blessed. And also generations, your generation shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in your house. Hallelujah. And your righteousness endure it forever. Hallelujah. You forever be pleasing God in Jesus' mighty name. Aren't you glad this is the promise of the Lord for you? Upon your obedience. Hallelujah. If you, if you will obey God, what he's declaring to you tonight, I want you to know he's not the man that will lie. Neither the son of man that will change his mind. He has spoken it, so he will bring it to pass. If you believe, if you believe, all things shall be possible unto you, and you shall be fruitful in the land, even this month, and beyond in Jesus' mighty name. Saints of God, let us pray. Let us pray. Make up in your mind right now. Propose your special sac sacrificial thanksgiving offering. Hallelujah. God is leading you. To sow the offering, the gifts into this ministry, go to our website www.gfmi.org.uk and God will surely meet you at the point of your need or send us a text and we shall give you details where to, where to send your sacrificial gift to. Father God, thank you for everyone who have partake of this blessing tonight. Father, thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, your loving kindness over the life of your people. We bless your most holy name. We bless your wonderful name, O God, our Father. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We continue to dwell in your house forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. And all the saints shout, Amen. Saints of the Most High, we're going to be starting with testimony from you. Log on early. Praise God. Those listening on the radio Please send your written testimony via email. Send your testimony in advance before Monday, please, to Bishop Akintola at hotmail.com. And we're going to read that live next week on the air. We're going to be starting with testimony next week for a reason. Hallelujah. Some of you, you will have tremendous testimony to share. 
even based on your obedience, even as a result of divine instructions tonight. Some of you, the encounter you had tonight, praise God, and previous weeks, perhaps, be encouraged to share. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. When you testify, hallelujah, you are witnessing to Jesus. You are being a witness of Jesus. Amen. The testimony is not for me. Hallelujah. It's for you and you are walking in obedience to God. God expects testimony to come from you. You have to be his witness. Amen. That's, the, that, that's what it's all about. Email me on bishopakintola at hotmail.com If you are also on the line right now, you prefer to email, please do so to the same uh, email address. If you have the facility to send me a text, send me the text before Monday on 07-803-275-189. I repeat, 07-803-275-189. You perhaps have that number already on your phone through the text you have been receiving from us every week. Uh, so... Text that before Monday, please. Amen. And then we will read that. We are starting with testimony next week. Hallelujah. And uh, we are also beginning a very, very awesome. We are taking this to a higher dimension. Hallelujah. Even next week. In Jesus' mighty name. Testimony will not cease in your life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Praise God. Remember, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And wealth and riches shall be in your house. In Jesus' mighty name. The Lord richly bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May you continue to abide under the shadow of his wing. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Shalom, saints of the Most High God. God bless you and good night. Bye-bye.